Hey, welcome back to Engineer's Workshop. I've got a big time fail to show you. Uh, a lathe part that I was working on, the adapter for the uh, four jaw buck chuck to a D14 back plate. So let me show you that, but before I do, you know, it's Halloween coming up. And so I've got the fall festival up at my wife's school to get ready for because I do a hay ride. And uh, let me show you the hay wagon and get things prepped for that. So here's a portable light stand I cobbled together. These are out of uh, four foot pre-cut two by fours from Lowe's. I don't know if you're aware, but two by fours and two by sixes, at least in the Eastern United States, are different wood than two by eights and up. Everything two by eight and up is yellow pine, southern yellow pines, hard, uh, dense. Two by fours and two by sixes are fir. These were pre-cut and they are yellow pine, which, you know, I feel it's a superior, stronger wood. So I grabbed them and I've got one of my 300 watt LED panels up there, puts out, I don't know, like 20 or 30,000 lumens. I'm gonna be using this on the hayride. I got these really neat wing nuts from McMaster Carr in half 13 thread. These are available up to three quarter, uh, three quarter 10 and even three quarter 16 if you need a larger wing nut. But uh, that way it lets me take this apart, put it together without tools, and it swings down and stores itself a little bit more compactly. But uh, being on the wheels, I can roll it around the shop, and I can aim the light where I want. So that's pretty cool. I want to give a shout out to Job Shop Fabricators in Rockingham County, North Carolina, and especially Andy, best welder I know, for fabricating this hay wagon body that uh, I built for, really it's, it's, a, it's a people wagon, it's for hauling kids at the fall festival. And it is made from 2x6 C-channel, uh, four by four angle and two inch by four inch by quarter inch wall tubing for the stake pockets. And it's just came out absolutely beautiful. It's based on a New Holland running gear, old New Holland running gear. When we got it, it had a, uh, just a real rotted wooden body and we took all that off. I rebuilt the front end. The steering tongue was all bent up, so I made a new one out of plate. I believe I had the uh, pivot bushing reboard. Took it to the took the front axle to a machine shop, and I reboard the pivot and put a new uh, new bushing in it. Connected the original tongue trailer tongue to it and then made a uh, rocker assembly with springs. You can see the, the springs are compressed on one side, so it gives a little bit of compliance when you're going over rough terrain because the, the connecting tube between the front and rear axle assemblies will allow rotation. And you probably can't see it, but I put thrust bearings in between the actual rolling element thrust bearings in between the kingpin and the um, in the front axle because when I'm maneuvering this thing around by hand putting it into the barn I just want it to be able to steer very easily and this is all held up really well it's for the original rims for it uh, 16 inch rims I've got discarded tires from the Tacoma so it's, I think it's a 235 or 245 series tire but uh, it's just a really really neat people hauling hay wagon.
We completed it in 2009, just painted it with uh, many, many cans, many, many spray bomb cans. And it just was New Holland red, New Holland yellow. So let me show you how, how you get in and out of it. The wood that we use for this, it's decking, it's actually Ipe. So these are two by fours out of Ipe. It is so, so rock hard. And uh, one by, I guess they're five quarter by six uh, deck boards. And this one panel comes out. So you can lift this panel out. I just set it off to the side. And I made a set of steps that uh, are the correct, you know, spacing. You get up into it, everybody can load up, sit down, and then uh, I just put the uh, sides back on and drive off. As long as hay doesn't get into the pockets, this one panel very easy to, re to remove. The rest of them, not so much. You know, they're kind of in there to stay. This wood is so hard, I actually drilled and tapped it. These are 3 quarter 16 truss head screws. And these are drilled and tapped into the 2x4 uprights. And, you know, I tightened them up pretty much as tight as I could with, a, I think it's a number 4 Phillips. And uh, they have held up. You know, nothing is stripped. It's basically held itself together for, what, 13 years now? So let's get it loaded up and get it on down to the school. I'm taking the floodlight, which is about 12 feet tall, extended to uh, light up the area so that everybody can load and unload safely. Got a couple of recent additions to the shop. This I got from an antique store. It's a set of machinist parallels. There's just enough lettering here. Um, it's an LS Starrett, but I can't tell what model. Pretty decent shape. I think they were rusty at one point, and they were cleaned up with what looks like maybe an orbital sander on some of the 
some of the faces, but uh, the machine surfaces are pretty good. So I'll be able to put these to use. Another item is a Federal Tense Indicator Test Master. A nice little indicator. This is the kind that will only operate in one direction and you have to flip the lever in order to reverse it. It has the line on one half of the dial so you can tell if you're looking in a mirror if you got this thing at a crazy angle um, which side you know it's it's uh, pointing to either plus or minus. And it's one of those ones that has a fairly significant pressure that you've got to put on the stylus to get it to move. And I guess that could be a, you know, a blessing and a curse. There are times when you'd want that, and there's times when you'd work against you. But it uh, came with uh, all the clamps and a mounting rod, an additional stylus with a slightly bigger point, and a piece of brass rod that the machinist that owned this must have been using for something special. So yeah, this is the type of mounting rod it comes with. I don't know what you call the things that clamp those two together on the height stand. There's a little clamp with a thumb screw on the top. I've been searching for them, but I don't know what they're called. So uh, if anybody knows, <laughs> leave me a comment so I know how I can get one of those. Because I, I do have a couple of the extensions here, but I have no way of attaching these to the height stand. This is the, the Doozer height stand that uh, he gave me a while back. Thank you, Doozer. So I got my 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 inch mics over here to do some checking on the lathe back plate and the adapter so let's uh, get those over here and verify some dimensions this is a d13 backing plate or insert that was on the buck chuck and this definitely had a light press you know maybe a half thousandths interference with the chuck body itself so i definitely don't want, don't want to go any bigger than this and I have just checked these mics against the gauge blocks, so they're reading dead on the money. So we're at three, one, three inch, one hundred, and about a half thousandths. I was facing this. There were some hard spots in here. I could hear it in the cut. We're at about 140, 3.140 right now, so about 40 thousandths oversize. So I'm gonna take a couple of light cuts in here, double check my diameter, and then uh, I think we'll take it down to about 10 thousandths over. I'm getting, I guess, what you'd call your typical 1018 or A36 finish on here. Okay, I'm at 3.109, so about 9 thousandths over its target diameter. What I'm going to start to do now is turn down the step to, uh, I think it's 2.414 quarter inch deep. Actually, 2.401. I set up a stop so that uh, at close to 250, my carriage will hit a uh, stop block. And so I'll take uh, probably 20 thousandths or so per pass. Yep. 
definitely getting into some hard spots. I can feel it. Okay, 40 thousandths. See if that makes any difference for breaking chips. actually does. Okay, we're at 2.405, so I'm going to try to take two thousandths off. Well, that looks like that took about three, so I'm at 2.402. I'm not going to take any more off with the tool. Maybe I'll just uh, touch that with a file very lightly. I don't know if that even did anything to it. Eh, 2.401 and a half. So we'll leave it there. Put a little chamfer on this edge now. I don't really want a 45. What I want is a lead in. So I'm going for maybe an eyeball of 15 degrees. And we're just going to touch this until it's maybe 30 or 40 thousandths. There we have it. Got a, a 15 degree, 40 thousandths by 15 degree lead in there. Uh, next step will be to shrink this into the back plate. Once it's in the back plate, take the few thousandths off of this OD and probably clean this face, put a little lead in there, and then I'm going to open up the ID to about probably two inches, ten thousandths, something I could pass a two inch stock through there nicely. So looks pretty good. Now this should not go into this hole, and it does. All right, here's what I did wrong. That's not the fit I wanted. This bore used to be two inch, 400 thousandths, but it wasn't running true. So I cleaned it up and my new bore was 2.414. I did not update the print. And then I made this a thousandths oversize, thousandths and a half oversize for the 2.4 hundred and I can throw it in there now. So I've got to make another one of these because I want that light press into the 2.414. Disappointing. This three jaw chuck is in really nice shape. I don't know what the brand is. There must have been a maker's mark on here which is gone but uh, it just says strong and then there's some kanji here, but uh, 662. Inside it's got like a couple spots that are a tiny bit rusty, but the registration diameter for the scroll and the um, pilot here is real good. I mean, this thing like, doesn't have much play in it at all. And I'd like to be able to use it, and I was hoping that I could turn a matching uh, counterbore in here to receive that adapter piece, but I don't have a lot of meat, a lot of thickness to play with. So I came up with a, another idea so that I could quickly interchange the three jaw chuck here and the buck four jaw. Because this one, this one pilots on uh, that diameter. I'm sorry, right there. That one pilots on the big counter bore. And uh, let me show you what I came up with. The bane of my existence not working to the latest revision of the print. So 2.414 is what I should have been targeting for. Anyway, 
a different, uh, different approach I'm gonna use here. So instead of having that hub projecting from the back plate, I'm gonna take the buck chuck. The buck chuck has a 3.100 thousandths, fairly deep counterbore in the back. Then it's back plate, you know, projected out into it. So I'm gonna turn a new piece to fit this counterbore that steps down to the uh, 2.414, and then the projection will be on the buck chuck. And that will index into the cleaned up bore that I did on the back plate. That way when I take the fore jaw off, I can use the you know, mating outer counter bore on that original back plate to use to mount the three jaw. Be easier to interchange those two back and forth. So that'll be the that'll be the um, focus for the next ring. I've got to get a piece of material though that is, you know, at least three inches, hundred thousandths diameter, and probably an inch inch tall. Uh, I'll have to look around, see what I've got here. I should be able to come up with something. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little drive down the road uh, and the hay wagon overview. Um, now that I've got my auxiliary shop light. I should have a little bit better lighting for some of these videos in the shop and also moving forward I'm going to redo this part. Um, another lesson learned to make sure you work to the latest print but I will I will get another one made and then we'll be able to start using that four jaw chuck use the three jaw chuck interchangeably and keep on working on projects here at the shop. So Thank you again so much for your subscriptions. Uh, hit that like button, share them with your buddies. Let's try to grow the channel. Um, and like always, uh, as we say here in Engineers Workshop, until next time, stay safe.